the rumors about the breakup of Little Feet are about as about as many as the rumors of the getting back together of the Beatles. What's the story on that and about your solo career? The band had been together about ten years, and everyone was feeling um, everyone was feeling like th they wanted to try something on their own without my input or anyone else's input, and that started to happen oh about two years ago, I guess, two or three years ago, and what what took place was uh, we, you know, we just sort of went our various ways about three months ago. Um, Bill and Paul were touring with Nicolette Larson and they got a real nice band together for Nicolette and so they started to, get, you know, get into that and we're realizing the, the potential of that situation. So that's what happened. And um, so rather than fight it, I just decided to, you know, let things sort of take, you know, a, a hiatus, you might say, or hiatus. But the band is broken up or is not broken up temporarily, or...? It's hard to say, you know. It's, for my... Nothing's permanent, you know. Uh, oh, was it Socrates? Yeah, Socrates. Uh, in time, all things go wrong. And in time, um, all things go right, you know. It's back and forth, cyclic. And so that's my impression of it. Um, we had a lot of fun, you know, but the creative potential within the band um, was such that some people felt that they couldn't do what they really wanted to do, still working within this, this, the structure of Little Feet. And had you always wanted a solo career? Was there a, a solo Lowell Georgian nucleus, an embryo within Little Feet? I don't know, you know. I, I would write songs and feel uncomfortable about playing them on stage with the band because once the band got going, boy, it was tough to bring it back down again, you know, down to like long distance love level. Um, or trouble? Oh yeah, that was trouble. Yeah, it was. It, it, you know, in other words, um, I had a potential. Uh, you know, I, I will write a song, and it will be like that. You know, boom, it's done. This is it. And it may not fit the band's, um, you know, vision or their technique or their attitude of the whole unit. And if you look at the and if you look at the uh, chronology in 1971, on the first album, there were six or seven Lowell George songs, seven or eight maybe. Then on Sail and Shoes, there were a few less. Although it's one of the great albums and one of you know really rich in your tunes. And then after that, successively, less and less of you. It seemed as if you were sort of like pulling yourself out. Was no. that conscious? No, I, I wasn't pulling myself out. I was limiting myself to writing songs that I really felt were good, rather than writing a lot of songs. You know. Um, for instance, Teenage Nervous Breakdown. I wouldn't write another Teenage Nervous Breakdown. I would write something, you know, very different. As corny, but not, you know... Would you write another apolitical, a apolitical blues? Um, I've already changed some, you know, the uh, I Tell You Who Maney, he's in there. Uh, it's getting dated more, you know. Um, Chairman Ma would have a tough time calling you now. If he did, boy, I, I really wouldn't answer now. <laughs> but you were saying in the apolitical blues that you just you wanted to make music, it seemed to me, and don't bother you with uh, political tracts. That's what I seemed to get, and that was political in the time because people were wanting to be political at that time. Uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, politics. Uh, people were, you know, uh, carrying pigs to Chicago and stuff and getting hit on the head for it, and to me, that was it was. You know, and we wound up with Richard Nixon, right? Because of that, really. I mean, um, it was a very strange time, and I really wanted to stay aloof from it. I mean, the war was, I mean, a tragic war, and it was really a burden, a real spiritual burden on me. And I really wanted to pass right through it. I don't think I read a newspaper for months and months at that point. It was real tough. There's an impulse uh, encapsulated in the line, I wish the world would get off of my case and get on one of its own, something like that. It seems that you have, like, that goes through your life, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it, yes, it does. From time to time, I will, I will recede from circumstances and sort of let things fall where they, like the group, for instance. It, the the uh, chips fell where they did. And um, 
I didn't scramble to make an effort to gather them all up and force it to happen again. Uh, people said, well, I'm quitting and that's the way it is. And I went, okay. You know, and they were wondering what I was up to because, you know, what's he up to? What is he thinking? And when in fact, basically all, all I was thinking is, it's time for that to happen. In time, all things go wrong. You're starting a solo career after a very successful but not star-studded uh, group life of some almost the entire 1970s. You are emerging from a band that should have been much more, based on its merits, should have been much more popular, should have been stars years ago. Um, give me your thoughts on why Little Feet wasn't stars and how you see your solo career. Uh, okay. With, with that question, I'll ask you a question, which is, why wasn't Charles Mingus a star? You know, why, not that we're, with the band was anywhere near Charles Mingus in terms of, you know, creativity, but why? You know, um, uh, Arthur Crudup, right? why wasn't he a star? He wrote some songs that, you know, the Rolling Stones did. Why didn't anybody know about it? I mean, that kind of, that happens all the time. Uh, we were a little eclectic, I think. I mean, very eclectic, actually. <laughs> and that, that's the, probably the primary reason, is because we took a lot of chances, you know, with what we did. We really put, our, put it out there to, you know, you get stepped on. But it seems to me you were so good, <clears throat> and you had a major record company, and it just, there's no question that uh, the quality was there. But uh, it just seems to me that when, when people that were an eighth as good as you, uh, and doing fa you know, fairly similar kinds of things, you know, in a certain sense, mm -hmm. uh, did become you know, trillionaires and so forth, that Little Feet didn't, and here are dissolving before the average person knows the name Little Feet. You know? The music lover, of course, does know it. You're, mo you're more than a cult. You were more than a cult uh, phenomenon. But still, you know, one would have expected. When, when, I, when I play sailing shoes for people today, or when I play roll and or something like that, people just go, you know? You got me. I have no idea. You know, that's, that, I don't sell records, I make them. You know, that's really it. Ask the record company. I'd like to hear about your tour. Oh, I'm going on tour. Oh, right, me. Lowell George is a solo artist. Um, well, well, let's see, about 75, the group broke up for two weeks. And to put it back together, I had to sign up as a solo artist to Warner Brothers. And I started an album about six months after that and finished it about six months ago. And uh, somebody said, you have to tour. So Fred Tackett said, oh, I'll help you put a band together. And Freddie got all these folks together and we're doing it. That's basically what it's all about. And we're going out to, we're going out, I'm starting from scratch again. You know, all the little clubs and stuff we've, you know, the band played at years ago. You know, Little Feet played at years ago. And we're, you know, I'm doing it, whatever it is. And how do you feel about it? And you have sort of a kind of passive attitude, it seems to me, about it. Like someone else did it and someone else said this, and here are you doing it. I have a sense that you, you maybe had that attitude in Little Feet a little bit. Yeah, that was really my attitude. Things happen when they're supposed to happen. You know, you can't, I can't, I really can't get up in the morning and think about you know, the, the goals of being successful. Because what is success? I mean, it certainly isn't money, you know? I mean, money helps, but um, doing, doing something that you really like doing as a profession is really success to me, you know? That doesn't uh, drive you out of your mind. That's, that to me is, is success, and I guess I'm doing it. So I feel good about that. So here you are, living as a musician and doing the stuff that you have to do, basically because you know you have to do the licks, the business licks to survive. Is that sort of a capsule? I don't know. Close? No, I, I, I really haven't really thought about it. You know, I don't think about it. I just, you know, you, I deal with it each day as it comes or, or goes, depending upon, you know. I'd rather be fishing. I know that. No, not really. I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm enjoying this band. It's a new experience. Uh, it's, it's fun doing that. I like taking chances. 
That's kind of a chance to me. Blow away this cruel reality and keep me from his storm. Suspicion has crept in and ruined my life. I'm messed up and hassled and worn. Well, it's pure indignation. It's just another sensation. You know, and I like to knock on that door. But the boy, he keeps on calling for more. Yes, in my sweet China white, she ain't here tonight. Oh, and that love has robbed me blind. Cast away, cast away from this bowl full of pain, for it sinks beneath the waves. Yes, and my sweet China white, she ain't here tonight. Oh, and cocaine. Has around me blind.